Uh, Fank, thank you for that very generous contribution. He says he's an anarchist and he's giving me money in spite of that. So uh, thanks. All right, Jennifer. What do you think of these companies recently withdrawing brands like Aunt Jemima and Eskimo Pie and things like that? I mean, look, uh, brands, it's, a, it's an issue of marketing and, and right, it's, I don't think there's anything, I, I don't oppose that in principle. I don't, I don't get the Eskimo pie. Like, I mean, Eskimo's cold. I mean, it, there's nothing derogatory. I kind of get the, the, the um, uh, Jemima reference because of the context, the historical context in which it was done. Uh, it is somewhat in, insulting, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to blacks that image uh, that is projected. So I get that they want from a marketing perspective to change the image of whatever it is that they're selling. I really have no real problem with that. I, I but the Eskimo one just is, I think it's ridiculous, but uh, I, I mean, Eskimo is really insulted by having an ice cream named after them. I mean, it's just, that's just bizarre. But um, I'm sure that it goes overboard and look uh, you know I, I, uh, I you know what is there there's uh, the Cleveland Indians I don't know if there's if there's pressure for them to change their name because Indians I don't know Redskins Washington Redskins there's pressure on the Washington I, I don't get it. Um, it you know but I guess maybe if you're a Native American and you know we live in a tribal world right now we live in in, in a world full of tribes where people People get easily insulted if they think their tribe is being insulted. Uh, so I'm not surprised, and I think you'll see a lot more of it. It's just the beginning. It's the tip of the iceberg. Political correctness is on steroid and has now been mainstreamed completely. So uh, in that sense, um, Black Lives Matter won. I mean, they, they, they won big time uh, in, in, in establishing much of what they think um, as I mean, the more moderate positions, I don't think their nutty positions are winning, but their more moderate positions, I think, are, are winning out, are winning out a majority of Americans. Thank you. It's just a reality. Uh, let's see, Darius. You're muted. Muted, muted, muted. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, on the topic of BLM, uh, I think this is our first hangout since those, the protests began. Uh, so you've spoken, you've spoken critically about them in recent episodes. And, uh, uh, and, and I, while I certainly agree that uh, uh, a lot of the protests have kind of created a toxic, toxic atmosphere where you know, re reasons given way to emotionalism, you know, and, and insane ideas like abolishing the police and you know, all white people have to confess their guilt. Um, but what I want to try to do today is, is uh, play devil's advocate um, on the Black Lives Matter movement, particularly around the, 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 the narrow issue of uh, anti-Semitism, which I think you've you focused on quite a bit in the past. Um, I was researching the connection between the BLM movement and so anti-Semitism. Is, is that yours, Darius? Well, unfortunately, it's Alfie, yes. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. Part of having a great watchdog, sometimes he goes berserk um, at the wrong time. <laughs> so uh, on the flip side, I'm safe as heck up here. Here you go. Um, uh, so I was, yeah, I was researching the connection between BL the BLM movement and anti-Semitism. And I found a number of articles written uh, in 2016 mm -hmm. uh, that refer to uh, uh, what was at that time a recently written manifesto. Yep. And I haven't been able to find anything more recent than that that cites this. Yep. And all the links to the actual sources uh, to try to see what that manifesto says, those pages have all, are all gone or they're just pages that no longer speak yep. to that. Yeah. Um, and and the, the, the talking points on the actual BLM website at this point appear to be sort of generic progressive talking points of inclusion and equality. And, uh, and they appear to have disassociated with, uh, themselves with, with those trying to use their cause to promote an expanding, expanded agenda that includes anti-Semitism. Um, so while they still will always be a magnet for evil intellectuals to try to tag along with them, 
Uh, it's not clear to me that we should throw out the baby with the bathwater. Well, this is the problem. The problem is that BLM was founded uh, and its founders are three women and, and you can find their names. I, I don't remember their names and you can track their record. And uh, these three women are very influential. They speak for the group. They, they appear on television and you can find out what they stand for. And, uh, and they stand for uh, the nuttiest, most leftist, Marxist, socialist, anti-Israeli, I don't know if it's anti-Semitic, I don't think I claimed they were anti-Semitic, but they're anti-Israel in a, in a disgusting way, uh, agenda. So, and as far as I know, BLM as an organization has never uh, denounced these three women who were the founders, who again, speak for them un, un, under the title. Now they have cleaned their website. I remember in 2015, 2016, going to the BLM website and finding um, anti-capitalist screeds I remember that when they protested in Chicago from that horrible shooting of a young, uh, young man uh, by a Chicago police officer that literally shot him 16 times in, in the back. And it, I mean, he was ultimately sent to jail, the, the cop. I mean, it was a horrible shooting. But they didn't choose to, shoot, to demonstrate in front of City Hall or in front of uh, the police or anything like that. They chose a million dollar mile and, and, and were purposefully preventing people from shopping and obstructing the ability and they and they will be interviewed at the time and their anti-capitalist agenda was very very clear and obvious so i don't think that it's an issue of being hijacked i just think it's an issue of they've got a broad agenda they realize it hurts them to put that up front um they want to gain legitimacy for this much Money. more radical agenda through advocacy around police shootings and, but what they sign, what they name, what, what, the, uh, what the movement represents is a much bigger agenda. And I think they're trying to con us. So uh, with, with, you know, so everybody's wearing a Black Lives Matter uh, sign and t-shirts and everything because they, because we all think that it's a narrow agenda. And then, but when you hear them talk on television, the agenda is broader and broader and broader and, 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 and really crazy. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, left of center agenda, right? It, it is a nutty, radical left agenda and it's very, very dangerous. And therefore, I, I do think we should throw the bathwater out with the baby. I'm not sure there is a baby there. I think, I think it's all dirty bathwater. There is an issue that's true, the issue of police abuse and potential racism in the police force. But that issue, we should not let a group like Black Lives Matter dominate if that is an issue people care about, they should start an organization dedicated to that issue and not let Black Lives Matter dominate that issue. Plus, you know, if you think about when they really gain prominence, they gain prominence around the, uh, forget his first name, um, something Brown. John Martin. In Ferguson. In and Ferguson. Michael Brown, yeah. Trayvon Michael Martin. Brown and Ferguson. But if you, read, if you read the transcript of the court case um, against the cop in the Michael Brown case, it turns out that the police were completely justified in shooting Michael Brown. That is, Michael Brown was not a case of, of police abuse, and this is why he was let go. And if all you have to do is go and read the court case, which colleagues of mine have done, and it's quite clear that Michael Brown was reaching for a gun of the police and, and was shot in self-defense. And yet they have never said, okay, not Michael Brown, right? Or Trevon Martin, which, which is, 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 again, you know, he's, he was not innocent at all. So they don't separate the cases between when it's true police abuse, like this case in Minneapolis and other cases that we've seen video of, and cases where it's not. So they just lump it all together. So you have to be careful of that if you're going to support the better portion of their cause as well. So it's a package deal. Yep. Like I talked about package deals with good and bad, but they, they have... They have defined their package deal. And the only way to deal with a package deal like this is to trash the concept and to come up with a new one. One, uh, one, one quick little note to uh, one of the uh, founders of the BLM organization yesterday was quoted literally, you know, in video as, uh, as saying we are trained Marxists. I mean, you can't get more literal than that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I mean, when you read them, uh, and, and, you know, the, another one, I read an interview with another one who calls herself an abolitionist. Abolitionist because her goal is to abolish the police and the jail system. She wants to abolish all police and jail. These are the, 
intellectual leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement. So uh, you have to judge a movement by its leaders. Thank you. It, it, it's hard too because you have to, in a way, you have to talk to your friends and say, man, I know what you're trying to say here by standing for them, but you're standing with the wrong people. Yeah, I think that's right. Davis, you looked like you wanted to follow up. No, no, thank you. Jonathan? What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...